DIY Duke here. Hey, let's do something fun today. Let's change the oil on this big freight liner. It's really simple. Let's get started. Okay, let's pop the hood on this big boy. Ugh. And take a look at the engine. It is the Caterpillar 3406E. And it puts out a maximum of 450 horsepower, 290 foot-pounds of torque at 1800 RPM. It is 893 cubic inches or 14, a little over 14 liters. Compare that to a 2016 Mustang Shelby 350 with 5.1 liters. So this is almost three times as large. It's a big diesel engine. And the big diesel engine is going to use a lot of oil. This one, we don't talk about quarts like people do in cars. Like four or six quarts. We're talking gallons. And this big boy uses 11 gallons of motor oil. So, we're going to take that old oil out and that old filter off. Put a new filter on and put some new oil in. So here are some of the things you'd need to change the oil in this big truck. One, you're going to need something to put all that old oil in. This is part of a oil drum. Some handles welded on it. We're going to need a filter wrench. That's a strap wrench. Because that oil filter is huge. This big box has it in there. We're going to need this big wrench to undo the oil drain plug and a cheater bar in case we need to get some leverage on that thing. And then we're going to need all that oil. Some rags are nice to have, some gloves, a creeper so we can get underneath that, and a pair of coveralls to keep that oil off of you. I don't care how hard I've tried and I've been changing oil in trucks since I was 17. I always end up getting some oil on me. Maybe I'm just a magnet to dirt and oil. But hey, that makes you look way cooler. First thing I like to do before I get started as a safety precaution is to take the keys out. I learned that the hard way. One time I drained all the oil out and I got to talking to somebody, blah, 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 and I thought, okay. And I forgot I didn't put any oil in it. I jumped in, started it up, Watch, and it's always good to watch the oil pressure gauge. And I saw the gauge and it's like, oh no. And so I shut it off right away. It didn't hurt anything. But it's always a good idea to take the key out just in case you get busy doing something else. And you're, you go to lunch, come back and go. And then you just blow it off or somebody else comes in. And they don't know what's going on. And it gets started and there's no oil in it. Major, major expense to replace an engine like that. Even though it's an older engine, it'd still be expensive. So let's go ahead and drain the oil. So, we're gonna get this big wrench on there. And loosen it. Okay. Then, I'm gonna pull this big hand back a little bit because this stuff comes out pretty good and this is where the gloves come in handy because <laughs> it's impossible to not get it on yourself it's always good to let the engine run a little bit too and that way the oil is warm and there it goes we hit a geyser the mother load it's always good to recycle the oil because it's a lot of oil. So it doesn't take a little while to get out of there. 11 gallons. They don't fill this thing up pretty good. You can see it rising pretty fast. Ah, oh, beautiful black oil. Texas tea. From the Bever Beverly Hillbillies. Anyway, we'll let it drain out, do its thing. And then we'll go ahead and pull out, put the plug back in and then when we take the filter off which is right there 
Oil's going to come out of that too. It's kind of messy. A lot of times you can put a plastic bag around there, like an old shopping bag or something, and catch most of that. But definitely just leave the the pan down here, and that way you can save the floor from or save yourself from too much cleanup. But this is the steps. First, drain the oil, and then when it's empty, just remember to put the plug back in. People have forgotten that before and then they've put the oil start putting the oil in and it just simply comes back out that plug Okay, we are gonna put the plug back in Oil's all out Now We'll take our big wrench We'll tighten that you want to make sure it's tight enough. It's not gonna come out again, right? So, oil filters you should be able to take them off without the wrench. The trick with oil filters is you never want to put them on very tight because they tighten up as you go through the cycle in between oil changes. And if you reef, reef them on with a filter wrench, they should only be hand tightened because if you reef them on with that filter wrench, it's so difficult to get them off. A lot of people don't realize that. They think, oh, the tighter the better, but not with an oil filter. There's directions on the labels now, or they didn't used to be, but it's just like a turn. Once it hits the base, then it's like a turn and a half or whatever. But in this case, I shouldn't need the filter wrench, so let's go ahead and try. You can see it's turning. And that thing has a gasket on it, so... I get them on there so you can take them off without the filter wrench, but sometimes you need them. Let's go ahead and get off. Oil's going to come out of there, so we're going to get the pan back in there. Oh, we're going to put a plastic bag on it, see if we can catch some of this. We won't be able to catch it all of it. So far, so good. Oh gosh, must be living right. The thing is, the thing's kind of heavy, so once it gets to the end of the threads, remember it's going to want to drop. If I do this without spilling any oil is going to be like the first time. Huh? I can't believe it. Now watch it fall over. Ah, getting a cramp in my side. <laughs> okay. Here is the old oil filter. And this is a spin-on type which all have a rubber gasket on top that seals it. One thing you want to make sure is that gasket doesn't stay on the base of where the filter goes because when you put the new one on that's going to create a leak because there should only be one gasket because that'll make them bunch up each other. So just check that to make sure that gasket came off. And then we'll go on to the new filter. Now these filters are round. Oops are round so they don't stand up very good they're just gonna fall over so I always find something to put them in like this old Folgers can and that way I can just fill this thing up and this is 1540 motor oil which most diesel engines will use a lot of people have gone synthetic but this one's had this oil in it and this engine has over a million miles without a rebuild so the very long-lasting engines so this filter is gonna take a gallon of oil in just the filter alone so you can, once you get some oil in there you can take some of it and just smear it around on that gasket and again, that will lubricate that gas and it won't bunch up when you spin that back on. 
But you don't have to fill it way to the top where it's going to run over because that's going to be messy. But just, again, this one's going to take the whole gallon. And there'll be still a little space in there. And that way we can have a little maneuverability to get it on without spilling a bunch of oil out. There we go. Let's go ahead and put it on. Another little item a lot of people will put, right, their mileage or their hours or the date and stuff on this filter if they don't have a record in the cab. But I always put it in the cab. Sometimes I put it on the filter also. Just so there's like a dual record. You can see a little bit of oil there. You can wipe that off if you want. And I always double check to make sure that's clean before I go ahead and put the new filter on. Looks pretty clean, a little bit of used oil there, I'll wipe that off. Okay, try to put that on as straight as you can so we don't spill the oil. Then you'll get it in the threads, feel them take hold, and you're going to spin that, and there it is. Now we're only going to take it one turn. And sometimes it doesn't even go a turn, but when you put that on hand tight like that, <sighs> that's good enough. So we want to identify where we're going to need to put the oil back into the engine. And in this case, on the 3406, it's on the passenger side. And there's the filler neck, which is right next to the dipstick. So. Some shops have a pump that they can pump the oil into and it measures the quantity. <laughs> this shop does not. So we're going to go ahead and put it in a gallon at a time. And I already know how much oil it takes, so if you don't, then put some in. And of course it's a big engine, so you're easily going to be able to put five to seven gallons in there before you start checking the dipstick. But we're going to do it a gallon at a time and we're going to put it into there. So let's get started. Now these are always challenging sometimes because sometimes the, they're not designed as well as they should be. Like they're obviously designed for an automatic pump usually. So when you do it at a gallon at a time, that's going to present a problem because we're not going to be able to even get that tilted back far enough. So we're going to have to adapt that by using a funnel. We've got a little over 10 gallons in there. We're going to go ahead and check the dipstick and check out that level, which is here. Now it's going to be hard to see because this is brand new oil. Well, yeah. But it's right here, which is pretty much on the full mark. We are full of oil. There's the damage. Our next step is just give it a once over and make sure we haven't left anything anywhere that's going to cause some impedance when we start the engine. But the next step is to go ahead and start the engine and go ahead and identify your oil pressure gauge which is right there because we want to make sure that oil pressure comes up. It's important you don't overfill them because that will stress out the seals that hold the oil in because if you overfill you need to drain it back because that puts too much pressure on stuff. So anyway, let's crank this thing up and watch that oil pressure gauge. There we go. And remember, we took the key out. And there's a good reason for that as we spoke about. Go ahead and put the key back in. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start it. Watch this oil pressure. check for leaks. Ooh, ooh. Next 
step is to check the level again to make sure we're good to go. Give it a little time for all that oil to drain back into the pan. And there's a lot of oil. We're going to check that some good. Okay, as usual, if you if you put in up to the full mark and you start it and it all gets up of the engine lubricates and get to where it needs to be sometimes you need to add a little bit in this case we need to top off that 11 gallon mark okay you're done with your oil change what you want to do is write on your mileage so you'll know when your next oil change is due I usually write it on a card and put it in the truck some have windshield stickers wherever you need to do it go ahead and write that down and notate that it's interesting that no matter what size a vehicle you have, all internal combustion engines use oil and have oil filters. It all works the same. This big truck can seem intimidating, but it's actually not. It's actually easier to change the oil on this than it is a small car because it's very easy to get to everything on this truck because everything's big, you can get underneath it and that sort of thing. If you want to do your own oil changes, you have to remember you have to be able to dispose of that oil. Here we have 11 gallons of oil to get rid of as well as that stuff. A lot of automotive parts houses will recycle that for you. You take it in and they'll put it in a barrel and recycle it. This is recycled. Try to recycle everything you can. Another thing is if you decide to go to an oil change place like a minute lube or a uh, well, a quick oil change place. Just be wary that sometimes people will take advantage of you or seemingly your lack of knowledge of how the automotive world works. A lot of times people go in for a $19 oil change and come out of there with a $300 bill because they go, oh, you need belts. You need an air filter. You need wipers. You need this or that. You know, we need to change your radiator fluid, your transmission fluid, whatever. If it needs changed, fine. But if it doesn't, just be wary of that. If you trust your guys, gals, whoever does your oil change, cool. Because you can be in and out in no time and not have to worry about all that mess. And you don't even get your hands dirty. But if you want to do your own oil changes, awesome. I love doing them. I have three more trucks to do. To me, it's enjoyable. And then I get to look at the engine and look at the trucks and make sure everything else is going on okay and nothing needs repaired. I do the my own oil change in my pickup. It's just something I've always done since I was 17. So you just kind of get into the habit and it doesn't bother you too much to do it. But again, just be wary of those who do oil changes for you. And I hope this helps you out. Until next time, DIY Duke.